Hey, what's going on, everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today, we're going to be taking a look at some emulation on the Steam Deck. Now, what you're seeing on screen right now is an awesome front end called Big Box, and this is what I personally use. This is actually installed to the micro SD card. I've got a 400 gigabyte card in here, and it just gives you a nice little interface to go through and select your games. We've got videos, got box art, and this works really well on the Steam Deck, even running from a micro SD card. Something I definitely wanted to test, and I had a few viewers asking about it, so I figured I'd go ahead and show that off first. And by the way, I'm still running Windows on this unit here. I'm going to swap back over to Steam OS, but I did want to get this out of the way because I had a ton of people asking about emulation on Windows with the Steam Deck. Now, with most of the stuff you're going to see in this video, we will be using the Vulkan backend, so a lot of this performance will transfer over to Steam OS. And I'll have a full video coming up with emulation on Steam OS, but I already had this installed on the M.2 SSD. So I wanted to get it out of the way first. When it comes to the hardware of the Steam Deck, we have a custom Ryzen APU, four cores, eight threads. In Windows, we actually have a base clock of 2.8 gigahertz and a boost up to 3.5 gigahertz. Integrated RDNA 2 graphics, we actually have eight CUs there and a max clock up to 1600 megahertz. And this is all backed by 16 gigabytes of LPDDR5 RAM running at 5500 megahertz, which really helps out with that iGPU. In this video, we're going to be testing out a lot of emulators. I did leave some stuff out due to issues going on right now, but we're going to cover a ton of it. We've got some Dreamcast, some PlayStation 1, some PSP, some PS2, some PS3. We've got some GameCube going on here and some original Xbox games. So with all that out of the way, let's go ahead and jump right into it. We're going to start off light with Dreamcast. All right, so for this first one here, I'm using the standalone version of Redream, and I did go up to 1080p here just to see if it would push it, and I'm sure we can even go higher when we're doing display out over USB Type-C, but keep in mind, the built-in screen's resolution is only 1280 by 800 and this is definitely handled in 1080p. I got a good feeling that this would even handle 4K doing video out with it. Next up, we've got some Sega Saturn. I'm using RetroArch and the Yopa San Shiro Core. I'm actually at 2x resolution. If I go any higher, I do get some dips under 60. But when it comes to Saturn emulation on this system, we're getting some really great performance with Yobasi and Shiro. I also went through and I tested one of my favorite ones, Sega Rally Championship, 60 at 2x. So we're good to go. Next on the list, PS1. I knew we'd be able to handle it here. I'm using RetroArch and the PCSX Rearmed Core. And it doesn't take much to do PS1, but it's still fun to have it in a handheld form factor. Taking a look at PSP, in a previous video I did test out Chains of Olympus, it does run at 60. Here we have Ratchet and Clank, looking really good here. Standalone version of PPSSPP, Vulcan back in, 4x resolution, and we can go higher, but remember, like I said, the built-in screen is limited on the resolution, so it's not going to make much of a difference unless you're doing video out. Now, when it comes down to it, one of the harder games to emulate that I've experienced on Ryzen APUs is Liberation. And with this, I didn't have to change any of the settings from Ratchet and Clank, which we just saw. Vulcan back in, 4x resolution, and this game is known for dips even on super high-end hardware, so you will see a few here and there. But in my opinion, it's fully playable like it is. Okay, so for the next portion of this video, I'm going to leave the Steam Deck stationary. I'm going to be using an external controller. We're still at 15 watts, but I do have my USB Type-C adapter plugged in. With a hard drive, it's just going to make it a lot easier on me to film this screen. And just remember, we're not adding any extra performance here to the Steam Deck. It's still running at 15 watts, and in handheld mode, you'll get the same kind of performance. Moving up a bit to original Xbox emulation using CXBX Reloaded. Unfortunately, I do have to turn the sound off for Jet Set due to copywritten music. But with this one, we're able to take it up to 720p. I did test a few more games, and something like Panzer Dragoon does run pretty decently at the native resolution. But it doesn't mean that all of these games are going to run fine. And it really comes down to the emulator itself and drivers for the Steam Deck. In the future, we might get better performance, but here's DOA3, and this one just isn't doing too well. I took it down from 720p to the native Xbox resolution, just hoping we could get a little more out of it. And unfortunately, we can't run this game at a constant 60, at least with CXBX Reloaded at the time of making this video. That may change in the future, and I'm definitely keeping an eye on updates for these emulators and drivers for the Steam Deck. 
Moving over to PS2 using the standalone version of PC SX2, I am at 720p on the balanced preset. And with some of these games, you may need to take it up to like an aggressive preset. But with the two games I tested, it did a great job at balance. And again, there are games that you'll be able to upscale even higher when doing video out of USB Type-C. But another one I wanted to test here was Shadow of the Colossus. Wasn't sure if it was going to do it, but with this, we're at 720p, balanced preset, got a couple dips every once in a while, but it's doing a pretty decent job. Checking out some PS3 using RPCS3, Vulcan back in, 720p. Initially, when this was announced, I had my reservations about PS3 emulation on this. I mean, I knew that there would be some games that are definitely playable, but when it comes to the harder to emulate stuff like God of War and even Skate 3, this might struggle. We've only got four cores and eight threads up to 3.5, and this emulator with those harder to emulate games loves extra cores and threads, especially higher clock speeds definitely help out. But I still went through and tested a few games, and overall the Steam Deck is great for PS3 emulation. We're not going to be able to do every single game at full speed, but here's Ninja Gaiden Sigma at 60 FPS. Didn't see a dip at all, and we're still at 720p here using that Vulcan back in. I did test out one last game with RPCS3. It's kind of my go-to test, and that's Skate 3. Unfortunately, the way it's set up right now at 15 watts, we're not going to be able to do 60 FPS with this game, at least at the time of making this video. So I locked it at 30, and it's actually pretty decent here. I would much rather be playing this at 60 FPS, but I completely understand what kind of CPU we have in the Steam Deck. And if you check out Afterburner, I mean, we're basically at 99% utilization on that CPU. I only got an average of around 42 when this was set at 60, but when you set it down to 30 or just lock it at 30 FPS, you get a pretty constant frame rate here, and it's not that bad. It is playable like this. Actually really impressed by the performance here, and especially given that the CPU or the APU in the Steam Deck is only running at 15 watts. Now I know I would have some people asking about SimU, and I did go through and I tested a few games. Breath of the Wild at 720p using the Vulcan back end, you can do 30 with it. Trying to unlock it at 60 only nets you an average of around 50 FPS, but personally, I like playing that game at 30 anyway. Next up, I moved over to Bayonetta 2, and it was a completely different story. That game can run at 60 FPS using the Vulcan back end. And the last one here is another one that's a little easier to emulate. You can get a constant 60 with that also. So in the end, I mean, when it comes to the Simu emulator, right now, even just as early as it is with the Steam Deck, we're seeing some really good performance. And it's only going to get better from here, you know, with optimizations to Simu itself and Steam Deck drivers. So yeah, overall, the Steam Deck is great for emulation, and we can obviously keep those resolutions down because we only have a 1280 by 800 screen here. But if you want to do, you know, video out over USB Type-C, a lot of this stuff can be taken up to kind of match that resolution on the external display. And some of this stuff can even go up to 4K. I mean, even 1440p with some of this stuff is definitely possible. But the easier to emulate stuff can do 4K. And the Steam Deck can do 4K out of USB Type-C. I've done a test with it. It was actually in my last video. I'll leave a link to it in the description in case you're interested in checking that out. But yeah, what Valve has put together here is a potent little combo when it comes to handheld gaming and emulation. So that's going to wrap it up for this one. Really appreciate you watching. Still got more Steam Deck videos on the way, so if you're interested in checking out more stuff running on this unit, hit that subscribe button. Make sure you turn on notifications so you know when I post my next video. If you're interested in checking out my last Steam Deck videos, links for those are down below. And like always, thanks for watching.